thì anh Kho không có cách nào để tiếp viện nhưng mà có những cái danh từ nào mà quý vị có thắc mắc thì có thể tôi sẽ cố gắng cho mình dịch ra Kho cho anh Kho Sorry, uh, I don't speak Vietnamese. Uh, wait, it's alright. Um, I'm going to talk about internet censorship. Uh, but before I do, I want to thank the the conference organizers, uh, men who invited me, and um, everyone I've met so far here have made me feel really welcome. And uh, thank you all for coming here. Thank you. Um, So my name is Paul Varnowski, and uh, the first thing I want to talk about is that oh, censorship is a worldwide problem. Um, uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, censorship uh, as it relates to Vietnam, and then I'm going to talk about a project I work on. Uh, which is designed to get around internet censorship. So, first of all, this map shows <coughs> all the places, all the countries that exercise censorship in the world. And this is not just internet censorship, but um, a volume. But there's usually a high correlation between, uh, say, newspaper print censorship and internet censorship. So the darker red on this map means uh, it's a bad situation. Uh, anything that's red is, is pretty bad. Um, the tan is a uh, noticeable problems. The gray, satisfactory situation. White, good situation. So you can see there's only a handful of white countries. And the United States is not even one of the white countries. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, perhaps we need to focus on America as well, but anyhow, <laughs> uh, as we zoom into Asia, we can see it's a pretty bad situation all around, uh, and Vietnam's on there, and it's in the dark red, very serious situation. Uh, so, these are some people who, uh, after they voiced their opinions, were thrown in jail, uh, they said stuff about, of all things, democracy, and um, most of them were, if not all of them, were thrown in jail for a while. I think one of them is out now. Um, so this gets into uh, the idea of publishing versus uh, access to information. So what the authorities tend to do is uh, penalize you for publishing information, um, but they don't do too much about people who actually just access the information. But uh, as part of my project, uh, if you have access, then you can publish, because usually there's, uh, you can use, if you have access to anywhere in the world on the internet, you can usually go to a website uh, outside of Vietnam, for instance, and uh, publish something on that website, and then if everyone else can get access to that website as well, you've, you've uh, gotten over the publishing problem. <coughs> okay, so first, how does censorship work? It's a pretty simple process. Um, So you're a user, say you're, uh, you're in Vietnam, and you're trying to get to, say, vietnamnews.com, uh, which is on the block list in, uh, as part of the firewall block list in Vietnam. Uh, so basically, the user types in their web browser, vietnamnews.com, the firewall intercepts it, it says, is this site on my list? Uh, if it is, then it just sends back, you're not allowed to access this page. Now this is only the most basic form of uh, blocking information. There's another way to do it, which is uh, if you access a page that has a keyword in it, say democracy or something like that, 
um, they can block it retroactively after the page is, sent, is on its way back to you. They can say, oh, this page has the word democracy in it, so we're going to block it. Uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure whether Vietnam is using this method, but also, but China definitely is. And uh, so the technology is out there. So the next part is I'm going to talk a little bit about the project uh, which I got involved in in, in 2000. Uh, which was to design a system to get around censorship. Um, it started as a group project, um, which eventually fell apart. Um, but in the beginning, we were basically eager to get something done, get something made, and uh, just to, to feel like we were accomplishing something. And so what happened is we built a system that um, was eventually able to be defeated. And now I'm on uh, round two of building the system. But first, I'm going to tell you about the easy way to get around the firewall. Is that if you know somebody in, uh, say, the United States, and you're in Vietnam, they can set up what's called a proxy for you. And what happens is that the proxy will fetch the web page for you and send it back to you. So usually, so you have to connect to the proxy. The proxy's uh, IP address is not in the censored list, so you're allowed to connect to the proxy. The proxy fetches the page and then sends it back to you. So this works as long as you know somebody in, um, in the States or some other free country that allows access to any web pages you want. Um, but the problem is that not everybody knows somebody. If you're in Vietnam, you don't necessarily know anyone in a free country that can do this. And if you do know them, they may not have, know how to set up something like this. Um, another problem is that um, the sensors can actually scan the internet for the proxies and um, and put them on their block list. Another problem is that uh, the proxy could go away at some point and you have no backup plan. If it goes away, you lose all of your access. So, we tried to develop a system to defeat this. And the original idea was a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, peer-to-peer, -peer, we may have heard of this term, um, is normally used in relation to file sharing on the internet. For example, there's a program called Nutella, another one called uh, Kazaa, Morpheus. Um, they're all used to share files and download music and all that sort of thing. Uh, and we thought it would be a good idea to use this to get around the firewall, so you basically have a distributed system of proxies. So all these circles with P's in them are, are proxies. Uh, we have the user, we have the firewall in between, and we're trying to get to the internet. This is a, sort of a simplified diagram, since everyone is actually on the internet, but, um, but that's the free internet over there. So what would happen is that the user would make a request to the system, it would be randomly bounced around some proxies, and eventually one would get the page they're asking for and send it back along that route, uh, and they would, get, they would get the web page. It turns out that the system can be defeated by a number of means. Uh, first of all, one of the proxies can be a bad guy sitting in the middle. Um, he can intercept uh, the, the requests and either just deny them or, uh, more importantly, the bad thing that can happen is if someone becomes a proxy is that they can discover all the other proxies in the network. And the same with the user. The user becomes, if the get bad guy, which is, would be the censor of the government, um, if 
the government becomes a user or a proxy with this system, <coughs> there's no way to prevent them from discovering all the proxies in the network and simply add them to their block list and uh, effectively shut the entire network down. So, try it. Okay. So, the next, so we went back to the drawing board and came up with a new, new way to do this. So basically, it's not a distributed system anymore. It's kind of a, just a whole bunch of proxies out there. And there's this one computer that's managing them all and managing uh, the users and the proxies. And it, it determines <coughs> Um, which uh, which users will know about which proxies and vice versa. And it limits how many proxies each user can know and how many users a proxy can know. And it's going to... So basically, um, it's very uh, detail-oriented after this point, but basically this, uh, this solves the problem of, of the bad guys becoming either a proxy or a user and discovering all the proxies. <clears throat> First of all, if the bad guy becomes a proxy, he, only, he can only possibly learn about users. And if the bad guy becomes a user, then they have to, they have to work at discovering proxies. It costs them money because in order to set up an account on the, the system, you actually have to um, manually do some work. For example, I don't know if you've ever signed up for a Hotmail account. It says, please type in these, uh, these letters you see in this image. And uh, so a computer can't figure out what the letters are in the image and type them in automatically. So you, a, uh, a human has to sit there and do that. So we're gonna use the same method here, in that you, in order to create an account on the proxy manager, that you have to actually do manual work. So in order for the sensor to defeat the system, uh, they have to spend money. Uh, and uh, that's basically the very short description of, of what we're doing. Let's see, if, yeah, so um, if you, I've written a paper on this subject. If you go to this website, the project name was originally peekwoody.org. Uh, I didn't come up with that name. I actually hate that name, but I was stuck with it. Um, and, and, uh, I can see from uh, my, when I look at the server logs, you can see what people are searching for when they get to my site. <laughs> but uh, you can also email me. Um, the paper I've written is on that site, as well as a couple other information about this project. Um, the original program we made, uh, I've taken down because it, it can be attacked. So, there, there is no software, but basically what the project is right now is, is research. And uh, until the research is done, we can't write any software. And we made that mistake the first time around where we just wanted to get something out there, pretend like we were, we were accomplishing something. Um, and in our eagerness, we forgot to uh, take care of the attacks against the system. So this time, uh, we don't want to make that mistake. So, are there any questions? Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, that's a very interesting subject. And I noticed on the, the map that uh, Canada is white, and you live in Canada, so you wipe out all the censorship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a question over here. Hi, Paul. My question is, um, for the process to work, these user is it have to be an anonymous user? And if it's so, would that increase the security problem with the internet since they can use uh, access as a proxy anonymous and 
use that to circumvent or compromise other secure system or financial system in the world if they gain a shark account and from there they can do uh, a denial of service attack on the server. That's a very good question. Uh, the question is basically, can you use this network to uh, attack, uh, attack, say, for instance, a bank system anonymously? Since a, a proxy allows you to allows you to gain anonymity through uh, because the the connection doesn't look like it's coming from you anymore. It looks like it's coming from the proxy, and this is another reason. We've designed it um, the way it is, is because you have accountability in the system. So if someone does uh, try to attack another system, then we have records of what IP address you came from. And so if the police come and say, uh, we want to track down this person, we can give them the server logs. And that may raise your eyebrows and say, whoa, you you're, you're uh, keeping track of everybody, and uh, you can uh, you can turn them in at any time. And that's the trade-off you have to make in this kind of system: is that uh, between people who abuse the system and legitimate users. Um, that's why this has to be run by a trusted organization. Um, hopefully, when the system is deployed, we can. Uh, we can get a well-known organization to run the system that uh, everyone everyone can agree on that is trustworthy. Um, so, uh, right. So, the system we originally the original P2P system was designed so that oh, no matter what government you live in, uh, it, it, it'll work. But it. No matter where you are, there's a government, and they're going to impose laws on their citizens. And there's no way around that. You have to work within the laws of the country you just in. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's another question. Okay. Uh, um, I have a question. When I understand that you are doing this um, through a, maybe like a P2P network, but the question I have is that the people in Vietnam, they I don't think they know how to set up I don't know, I haven't seen the software yet, but I don't know if they are able to set up a program and run th simple things such as Napster. I mean, this sounds very easy, but I was wondering if there's any way for the internet user in Napster to just go on the Internet Explorer and then surf the website through your system, or is it something that you are thinking about? Because I think it's, it's the difficulty that, that is also a problem. Are you saying so you don't have to download any software to run it? Yeah, it's like, is, is, it, is it easy for them to set up? Oh, okay. For instance, your software? Well, that would be the goal, uh, obviously, is the, 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 the user we have in mind is someone who knows almost nothing about computers. So the goal would be to make it as easy as possible. Uh, but there is no way to create a program so that you don't have to download something first and install it. Um, the reason is, uh, if you could get around it, uh, if you could use it without downloading anything, then the bad guy can do the same thing and uh, basically compromise the system by discovering all the proxies. Uh, any more questions? Uh, thank you. My question is, uh, who is sharing what entity is the proxy manager? And how do we uh, measure the legitimacy of that, that proxy manager? Um, like I said before, it will have to be a trusted organization, uh, which probably won't be me. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, perhaps uh, Voice of America, I'm not sure how well that is trusted, but an organization like that. What's that? BPS. BPS, <laughs> okay. So, um, it'll, and it'll, it has to be based on the trust that people have for that organization. And uh, other than that, um, uh, that's, that's all. That's all there is. Uh, Maybe they have to go back to the development again. <laughs> <laughs> the question is that the state two is still in a research uh, phase, or have you, have you done a small test trial? Uh, and a limited scope to, to prove that, 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 that your design is, is feasible 
Happy about that. Right. Well, I'm still, st still researching. Uh, one thing I should point out is that this is a uh, a part-time project for me. I, uh, I have a full-time job and then I do this on the side. So progress is usually quite slow. <laughs> but uh, I'm still researching. Um, I have a good idea of, of what I need to do. I, um, but the plan is to, to, as you were suggesting, to run simulations of the final the final uh, algorithm we come up with. Okay. Um, my follow-up question is: um, Why? Why just you? Um, you know, usually with other open source uh, projects, there's a lot of people contribute. So why with this, uh, this project? The idea is very, very interesting, and I want. I mean, I imagine there should be a lot of people want to defeat the, uh, the censorship in the world around the world. So how come? It seems that a lack of uh, enthusiasm for, for this project. Could you explain why? Um, there is a lot of enthusiasm. Um, part of the problem is that the, you usually have to have a, a computer science degree to work on it, uh, and, and also to know how to program, which people, so you, you have to get people who are enthusiastic and people who are in the computer field, and uh, and people who have a lot of free time. <laughs> uh, which doesn't usually happen, especially when you work in the computer field. Um, I have gotten a lot of emails from people very excited to help, and, uh, and then I explain to them how they can help, and I usually don't hear from them again. <laughs> uh, so, I, at one point I was looking for funding for it, um, I stopped doing that in order to simply concentrate on, on working on the project instead. Software doesn't exist yet, so it's uh, it is cross-platform. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can run it on anything you want. Um, but uh, as far as being compromised, uh, the the old system was never compromised, but all the other systems that were out there were being compromised at the time, and so we learned that. Um, how far censors were willing, were willing to go in order to defeat these censor uh, circumvention networks. Uh, for example, there was a system out there called SafeWeb, and the way it worked is it was, it was a bunch of proxies, and the way you discovered the proxies is that you subscribed to an email list, and then they were sent to you whenever new uh, proxies came along. The problem with that is that the sensors also subscribe to the email list. And then whatever I, whatever proxy addresses they got, they simply added them to their sensor list. Um, so that's an example just of, of one that was compromised, but every single one out there uh, has been compromised or is capable of being compromised. And if, and if it, they ever got enough popularity, they would be certainly uh, compromised by one of the one of the governments. Thank you, Bob. Uh, okay, I just was wondering, what, what are the current consequences of uh, getting caught right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, as far as, uh, it's you mostly get caught for publishing information, uh, or distributing it. For example, if you send out an email, um, saying uh, Vietnam should be democratic, um, they'll come and arrest you. Uh, and the consequences are usually a multi-year prison term. <laughs> <laughs> That's your answer? <laughs> oh, uh, as, 
far as access, though, uh, usually you're not caught. Uh, first of all, they can't catch you because they don't know that you're... Um, this, the connection to the proxy would be encrypted, so they don't know what you're looking at. Uh, so, unless you're doing something else that would get you caught, and they retroactively use this against you. That's that's the only way they could, you could be caught. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, I, I think we're running out of time, and lunch is about to start in a few more minutes. So we're going to wrap up right here. And uh, I think if uh, you still have questions for any of the speaker, you can contact or talk to them personally uh, after the workshop. Uh, so thank you, Paul. I don't know. Yeah. Uh -huh.